Hi, and welcome to this video build log of the YMF-5. The, the WACO company began in 1920 and built the first airplane like this in 1935. Unfortunately, after the war, there just wasn't enough business and the WACO company closed in 1947. Fast forward about 40 years and the classic aircraft company assumed the WACO name and began building this beautiful biplane again in 1986. In fact, this particular model is modeled after an airplane that was built in 1999. Now the full-scale YMF-5 has a 30-foot long wingspan, 23 feet long. It's powered by a Jacobs seven-cylinder 300 horsepower engine. It has a cruise speed of 122 miles per hour and a never exceed speed of 214 miles per hour. And it has a three-place cockpit, two in the front and the pilot in the back. The Dynam YMF has a 50-inch wingspan, is 39 inches long, it's powered by a 3720 650 kV motor and has a 40 amp ESC. It's planned to be powered by a 14.8 or 4 cell LiPo battery. This makes it about 1 7th scale. Let's take a minute and see what's in the box. With the cover off, we can see, like with most Dynam airplanes, the YMF comes packed with its major components in separate boxes inside this retail box, a set of instructions, and I peeked below and saw some decals laying in the bottom of the box. This means that it's likely that you're going to get your YMF in great shape, even going through the shipping process. Let's unload these boxes and see what the parts look like. As you can see, as with most of the Dynam airplanes nowadays, there really aren't a lot of parts involved in the assembly. I've got all of the parts out of the boxes now. Each of them was wrapped separately in plastic and so I've got them out of the plastic as well. So we can see we've got the fuselage here with a large battery tray that provides access into the, uh, uh, the battery that's underneath that front cockpit. The lower side has a hatch also where you're going to gain access to the lower servos, so we'll keep that in mind as we uh, think about the assembly before we cover it up with that lower wing. We've got the wing halves here and here, uh, the lower wing, a couple of propellers, the tail feathers, the landing gear over there, and then of course um, the instructions and a bag of plastic parts. Now the parts include a couple of control horns for the tail feathers, which aren't mounted yet, as well as the uh, cabanes and, and supports for the wings and the attachments uh, to get the wings connected to the, um, to the fuselage. So right now, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time with the instructions to make sure I understand the order in which the airplane's gonna go together. Now I've spent some time with the instructions to try to figure out what the proper order for the assembly is gonna be. And it's gonna be a little bit different than what uh, the instruction shows. First, the, uh, as I mentioned, the control horns for the flight controls here on the empennage aren't installed, so that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do. Second, we're going to probably want to do some radio um, work since the servos are up underneath the wings. And so the instructions have the wings going on and then checking, uh, putting on the tail feathers and that kind of thing. So I'm going to reverse that, put the tail feathers on after I get the work done on the control horns, then make sure that I've got the servo centered and do that kind of thing before I get the wings on it and cover up that access. Now the other thing I found was kind of interesting is I was kind of counting through the various packages of screws and so forth. And almost all the connections on this model are described as 2.5 by 6 millimeter screws. Um, now, if you were to count the, the screws on the cabanes and on the supports on the fuselage, you end up with more than what I have in here. And so I've been trying to make some decisions about how I'm going to do that. What I've ended up with is four of the 2.5 by 6 millimeter screws that look like small wood screws with large uh, threads and a pointy end. And I think I'm going to use those to attach the support structure to the fuselage and then I've got a dozen of the six millimeter uh, screws that have a nut attached to it and those I'm going to use to attach the uh, cabanes to the supports uh, or to the wings. So there are three control horns that we're going to be putting on. Uh, two of them are going to be going on the um, 
horizontal stabilizer for the elevators and then one of them will be going on the vertical stabilizer for the um, for the rudder. Now what we're going to want to make sure that we do is that we get these mounted on the proper side and that we use the proper um, control horn. And so the kit comes with control horns like this that have the control horn mounted in the middle of the plastic piece. There's one of those which would tell me that it goes on the uh, rudder. And the other two are control horns that the horn is mounted on the edge right here which will tell me of course that since there's two of them it'll need to go on the elevator. And since this platform that goes against the control surface is smaller on the uh, ones for the elevator, the smaller of the two plastic uh, plates that the screws will screw into are going to be for those. So I've got those identified properly as opposed to discovering that I've got different ones after I've got it all put together and end up with one that doesn't fit. So each one of these mountings are going to include four parts. One will be the control horn which has the holes that the uh, clevis will mount in right on top of the hinge line, the two screws, and then the back plate on the bottom that the, uh, the screws are going to uh, screw into. Now one of the things I like to do when I put these on is just add a little drop of the kit glue on the spot between the sticky there between the where I'm going to put those plates so that'll be just a little extra uh, support there. So I have the uh, screws started in the control horn. It's on the proper side. The screw holes in the model are going to allow you to know which side that is but I've also double checked the fuselage to make sure that I've got this going to be on the side that the con control rod coming from the rudder surfaces uh, servo is on. I'm going to screw that down until it's starting to peek out the other side. Then I want to take a look at the mounting holes on the top of the plate so that they line up properly. Now if you have the plate upside down, they're still going to fit, but then the little plate's going to be on a funny angle. And so you want it vertical, you want it straight up and down, and so uh, I've got that aligned that way. I've got it over the tips of those two screws that I mounted just a moment ago. And so I'll just keep driving those through. Now as you can see I have the control horns mounted to the various control surfaces here on the empennage. Um, now you may have noticed on the previous clip I had the long screws as I was starting to put those in. Those are not the right ones. It's the 10 millimeter screws uh, that'll work and by the time you have them uh, cinched down just a little bit they're going to come through the bottom of this plate. Uh, just a couple of threads worth and I've put a drop of CA on the end of them to make sure that they stay put. And as I mentioned we've got the empennage glued together. So now is probably a good time to talk a little bit about glue. I tend to use the kit glue on these Dynam planes. I've built six or seven of them and I find that it works fine. Now the thing to keep in mind is that this is a contact cement type of glue and the technique that you use when you use it really makes a difference. And so uh, when you use the glue you want to put the, uh, the glue on the surface that you're going to uh, be gluing, put it on the opposite surface, mash those two together, move them around a little bit so that you get a smooth thin coating of glue on both surfaces and then just let them set for a bit. Usually between one and two minutes is a good amount of time to allow the glue to set and then you can push the pieces together uh, and it's going to bond fairly promptly. Now if you let the, dry, the glue dry out too much when you start the process of pushing them together they're going to stick and so depending on the kind of piece like this tail that uh, had uh, kind of uh, cups and, and nubs to push together it might be kind of difficult to do. So I found that one to two minutes of allowing the glue to start to get tacky in the air really makes this glue easy to work with and it bonds firm. 
Now some folks like to talk about polyurethane glue. This is the Gorilla brand of polyurethane glue and it also works very well on this EPO foam. Um, you put a little bit of glue uh, on the surface, not a lot, and then you put the surfaces together. Now here in the Phoenix area where the humidity is so low, I usually either run a wet finger along one side of um, where I'm going to be gluing one of the two parts that I'm gluing or I spritz it with a little spray bottle to get some water because the polyurethane glue needs the moisture to begin the curing process. It becomes really sticky, it bonds firm, it sticks well to the uh, the EPO glue or the EPO foam here. The thing you need to watch out for with polyurethane glue however is that it foams and as it foams that's the curing process it tends to expand and so in a piece like this if we we were to use polyurethane glue, we'd want to stand there or sit there and hold it while the glue was curing or clamp it in some other way because you don't want the glue to push the pieces apart because then as a sub-assembly it might not fit properly in the primary assembly when you come to put the two pieces, uh, two larger pieces together. On EPO foam you probably don't want to tape it closed if you're taping over ta uh, paint because the tape will likely pull off the paint. So just something to be mindful of. It's a good solid bond but you need to know uh, some of the um, the technique to use to make sure that everything works well for you. Now in this case it's just a little bottle of CA. CA works fine on EPO foam. This is not foam safe CA but regular CA. Um, some manufacturers even recommend using CA on this EPO style foam. Uh, they'll also recommend a lot of times not using the kicker. Uh, however for repairs and some of that stuff I have used CA and kicker and it works fine. The foam has enough durability that it's able to withstand the heat of the curing process even when you're using kicker. Although most of the time when I'm using CA I just use the CA plane and then just allow it time uh, to cure in the air without using the accelerator. Last but not least is epoxy. I've got a couple of bottles here, the hardener and the resins. Uh, I tend not to use epoxy on EPO. In fact, some manufacturers, Multiplex for example, will talk about not using epoxy because the foam is kind of waxy and kind of oily sometimes and it's really smooth and it's hard for the epoxy to get something to grip on. And so unless there's a particular need like um, uh, supporting a motor mount in a model or, or maybe a battery battery tray in there. Uh, I'm not going to use epoxy on uh, these EPO foam models uh, like joining wings or joining fuselages. The other thing about epoxy of course is that it's heavy and so you can get as good a bond with either the CA the kit glue in Dynam's case or the Gorilla Glue uh, without the weight uh, and then I use the epoxy uh, for uh, specific purposes where I want a, um, a little extra support or some uh, extra glue around the joint. Let's take a minute now and move to the wings and I'll demonstrate the technique for using the kit glue. Now we've got the other two parts of the wing here and we've inserted the glass rod as the instruction calls it or the, the fiberglass rod into the pocket in the wing. It's going to go to a similar pocket right here in this wing and we're going to go through the same process with the glue. Again we're going to be using the kit glue and we're just going to apply some along this edge. You don't need a lot but you need good coverage. Okay, We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we're going to get it in these little cutouts where the other tabs from the other wing are going to fit. And then we're just going to slide the rod into the pocket that's there in the wing and put the two pieces together. We've got good coverage. And then now before, like before, I'm going to just pull it apart. You can see a little stringiness there between the pieces of the wing. And I'm just going to sit here and wait for about a minute for the air and the glue to start to interact and for it to dry out a little bit so it'll be a quick uh, firm bond. Okay, it's been about a minute so we're going to put those back together again. Push them in there tight. And as you can see along this line the glue sealed right away. 
There's no gapping or anything uh, because we allow that glue uh, to cure a little bit in the air. So when those two sides come together, it's together nice and strong. So as we did with the tail, we're going to set this aside and let the glue finish curing. So with those glued pieces set aside curing, now we're going to be basically joining the instructions on step one. And so in this case, we're going to be dealing with the landing gear. It's just going to be a matter of putting the landing gear across the space, lining it up with the holes, and then using these two and a half by 10 millimeter screws that came with the kit. Now these are the ones that look more like wood screws as opposed to a bolt that a, uh, that a nut would go on. And so we'll get these pressed in here and get them mounted. Go back and forth as they tighten down. Remember you're screwing into a plastic receiver so don't cinch them down too tight. Got them on nice and firm. And then the plug that came out of the fuselage across the bottom has two white strips and that's the double stick tape that the instructions are referring to to stick it down. So we'll pull the covering off that double stick tape. We'll lay it on top, match it up with the screw heads in case you have to take it out. And hopefully that double stick tape is going to be firm enough to hold that in place. So that's all there is to that. The next step in the instructions is to mount the tail wheel. We have that here. It's going to fit into this little um, <clears throat> sleeve. And the sleeve has got a little grub screw in it, and so I'm going to take that out. Careful that I don't lose it. And when I have it mounted on the end of my uh, Allen key that came with the kit, I'm going to use a little bit of the blue thread locker. I've got a little bottle of that here. And I'm just going to put a drop of it on there so that doesn't vibrate out. The wheel has a little flat part on it, and so that's what you're going to want to line up with the hole in the sleeve right here. So we'll drop that in there, place the grub screw, align it, and tighten it in. So it's in there good. It's got some of the, uh, uh, the low, t low strength. Uh, thread locker on it and that should keep everything nice and tidy. At this point I'm going to deviate from the instructions a little bit. The instructions call for the Y cord uh, that will connect to the servo leads coming from the wing to be attached and then for the wing to be attached. But when I get that big wing across here it's going to make a couple of things a little more difficult so I'm going to hold off on that. The other thing is, as I mentioned before, access to the bottom of the, where the servos are is through where the wing is going to attach. And so I want to, at this point, do a couple of things. One, I'm going to program my radio, get the receiver installed, make sure that the um, servos are centered so that when I glue on the tail, I have the, the proper uh, length I can deal with uh, physically here with these little screw-on clevises. Um, and then I'm also going to put on some of the decals because again with the wing on and certainly with the top wing on when you normally might put the decals on at the end. In this particular case I'm going to put the decals on early so I have good easy access to the side of the airplane. So I'm going to go away for a little bit, program the radio, put on some decals, and we'll see you back in a bit.